Welcome to another Excel VBA tutorial. In today's video, we are going to cover how to select individual cells and individual ranges in our workbooks, worksheet, or just currently the active sheet that we're on. So very important concept because obviously if we can't navigate properly around an Excel workbook using VBA, it's really hard to do anything meaningful within VBA because naturally you can't go to the right place that you need to be to modify the information that maybe you need to modify. So this video is gonna cover how to kind of navigate and keep it simple, just talking about individual cells and then ranges of cells. So we're gonna walk through of how to go and select those cells. Now, currently I have a couple workbooks open. So the current workbook that I have open is called Selecting Ranges. And on this workbook, I have three individual sheets and some of the information is filled out. And then I have another workbook that is behind this one. It's called Book Two. And again, it's got individual sheets on it and each some of these sheets have uh, different ranges filled out. So it's just gonna demonstrate that we can actually go to ranges of cells that are not on our current workbook but are in different workbooks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my VBA editor and I'm going to start running through some examples. So I'm going to go up to my Developer tab, into Visual Basic. I'm going to move this over here and snap it into place. I'm going to move this a little bit over so you guys can see it. And let's start with the most basic example, selecting an individual cell on our active sheet. So all I'm doing in this example is I'm going to my active sheet, and I'm going to select the cell B2. So this one right here. Now, to specify the cell that we want to select, there's really two ways we can do it. One is using a cells object, and one is using a range object. If we use the cells object, what we have to pass through are two different parameters. The first parameter specifies the row that we want to select, and then the second parameter specifies the column that we want to select. So in this example, it's row two, column two, which is B2. And then all we're doing is we're calling the select method. Now, if we don't want to specify our cells using the actual numerical values, we can use a string that we can pass through then the address of our cell. And if we want to do that, we have to use a range object. And with the range object, we pass through a string and then the address of the cell that we want to select. So in this example, I'm passing through B2 or the actual address of my cell within my workbook. So B, the actual alphabetical character, specifies the column, and then the row is the numerical value, so it's gonna be two, in this case, B2. I think I've been selecting B1 the entire time. It's actually B2, my bad. <laughs> so let's run through this example and select those individual cells. Oop. So selecting it, and it selected it again. Now, because I already had it selected, it didn't move that cell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this just so that way you guys can see it. But if I press F8, okay, it took me to B2. And then this one took me to B3. So just like I was expecting. So that's how we select an individual cell. I will say, you don't technically have to pass through active sheet as long as you remain on this active sheet. So if we negate this, technically what we're saying is active sheet. So even though we're not explicitly saying it, VBA in the background is assuming that we mean the active sheet, just like it assumes that we mean the active workbook. Now, this is okay to use in some instances. Other instances, you wanna stay away from this. You wanna be explicit. You wanna make sure that you're telling VBA directly which cells are you selecting. This can get very confusing very quickly, especially when you have, want to reference a different cell range but I'll kind of explain that in a different video. But at this point, just know that you technically don't have to pass through active sheet. It will assume it in the background. Now, if we wanna to go to a cell on a different sheet, there's actually a, a different method we have to use. And with this one, what I can do is I can call my application object, so the Excel application itself. And within that object, there is a method called go to, and that will take me to the address that I'm specifying. Well, I've got to pass through the address. Well, in this example, I'm passing through the active workbook that I'm on. I'm going to say go to sheets two, and then I'm going to say go to cells 
six five. So that's e six. So e six. It's this one right here. That's cell e six. Now, what I kind of like to demonstrate is this will actually physically take you there. Um, it will switch your screen for you, and it will take you to that individual cell. And just like up above, you can either use the cells object or the range object. Um, it really kind of just boils down to preference. Keep in mind, though, if you pass through a range object, there are these little brackets right here. So just keep that in mind. And so if I run this, see how it kind of switched my screen here? It, so it actually took me to sheet two and it specified range E6. So it selected that range. Now, if you don't want to use the application object in the go to method, there is another way you can do it but I kind of call it the long-handed way because you have to break it into two lines of code. And so really what we have to do is we have to activate the sheet first. So we have to activate the sheet that contains the cell we want to select. And then we specify the cell that we want to select. So in this example, I'm passing through the active sheet just to be explicit. Um, but again, if you're working with like a range object, you don't necessarily have to do that. So that's how we would do it the long handed way is I activate my sheet first and then I actually select the sheet that I want to on the active sheet. So two different lines of code in order to achieve the same thing. Again, boils down to preference. Me personally, I would use this if I'm actually selecting the cell just because I think it's easy to understand and it conveys all the same information that I'm doing down here. It's just doing it in one line of code, vice two. Um, if I'm referencing code, Okay, that's a little different. I'll explain maybe what I would do differently in that situation. But again, that's for another video. So if we can select a cell in a different worksheet, naturally people kind of go, well, can we select it in a different workbook? Of course you can. Um, we use the same method. So we use application go to. But in this example, all I really changed was instead of specifying the active workbook, I actually am more specific, uh, sorry, explicit. I call the workbooks collection and then I pass through the workbook that I want to work with. And it's kind of just like sheets. I'm passing through the sheet that I want to work with and then I'm passing through the cell that I want to select. And so in this example, it will, it will take me to that workbook and it will select that cell. So I kind of like to demonstrate this one too. So if I press F8, that's what it does. So it took, it took us there to that different workbook. So again, that's kind of what it's doing there. As you can see, it took me to that cell F7, and then it also took me to the one before. So that's really how this one's working is, again, it's taking me to that individual um, cell on that workbook. And then if I can select an individual cell, naturally, uh, I should be able to select multiple cells. So how would I do that? Well, if I want to select an in, uh, multiple cells, what I have to do is I can do it really three different ways. Each one of them is still using a range object. But in the first example, I pass through the first cell of my range. So in this example, it's range two, three. I'm gonna go back to this one because I think this is where I select it. Perfect, so it's uh, two, three, which is basically C2. And then the next one is 10, four, which is cell D10. So it's the starting point of my range and then the ending point of my range. That's all that's meaning. So that's if I wanna use the cells object. If I don't want to use the cells object and I just want to use the range object, I can do it two different ways. Um, the first one is I still pass through a string, but I pass through the starting cell and the ending cell, and I separate them using a colon. So this is specifying range C2 to D10. And then if I don't want to incorporate the colon, I don't have to, but I have to pass through a comma instead. So this one, again, will select those cells for me. So that's how I select a range of cells, and this is all happening on my active sheet. If I want to select a range of cells on a different sheet, again, I use the application go to method. I specify the active workbook, the sheet that I want to go to, and then the range that I want to select. So in this case, it's D3 to E11. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to call this one again, and I'm selecting it. And just like above, I can do it either, I kind of call it the shorthand way or the longhand way. If I do it the longhand way, I have to break it into two parts. I have to actually activate the sheet, and then I have to select the cells on that sheet. If I want to select a range of cells in a different workbook, same method, application go to. Again, only thing I'm changing though is I'm specifying the workbook 
that I want to work out of. So here, if you can tell, my cursor went away, so it meant that it selected those cells on that workbook. If I go up here, as you can see, it selected those cells for me. I can actually select named ranges. So this is something we can do in Excel. We can take a range of cells and we can assign a name to it. So if I go to sheet two and right here, I've selected this range of cells. Well, if you look right up here, it's got the name test to it. So I sent, I sorry, I, I set the name of that range equal to test. If you ever wanna see the named ranges that you have in your workbook, you can go up to formulas and then down to name manager. And right here, this will tell you all the named ranges that you have within your workbook. And so all I'm gonna do in this example is select those name ranges. And so one exists on my active worksheet, the other ones exist on a different worksheet or on a different workbook. Keep in mind here, I didn't specify the active sheet. So this is to demonstrate that I don't have to pass through the active sheet. It's assumed in the background. So it selected that range of cells. It selected the other one, so it took me there. And then the other one also selected. So if you saw that flash, that was basically it changing the selection. So that's all that was doing. But again, this is to demonstrate that you can select a named range across multiple parts of your Excel application. So a different sheet, different workbook, it really just depends. And, and again, here too, um, I didn't specify the active workbook in the application go to method, but it assumed that's what I meant in the background. And then naturally, if I wanted to, I don't have to do what I call the long, I mean, the shorthanded way, I can do the long handed way. I just have to activate the place that I, that, that named range exists. That's the only thing. Okay, so that does it for today's video. We kept it kind of short because you know it's pretty straightforward once you do it a couple of times. But if you have any questions about what we did in today's video, so how to select ranges, how to select cells, or anything like that, you know, please put them down in the comments below, and I'll try to get back to you with an answer or something like that. And also, if you're not already, make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates as we release new videos. Um, in my next video, I'm going to go over how to use the offset uh, property, so how we can actually change our position uh, once we've selected a cell. Uh, this comes in handy if we want to go down to the last cell, the last column, all sorts of different things. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.